Here I have the Boston weather data set. You can click on metrics to get a summary view of the data. You can filter the metric that I'm looking at from the drop-down list here. I'm going to click on prepare and add a new data pre preparation package, which allows me to manipulate the data. So I'm going to start by filtering out the FM15 records only. That's a good quality record to have in this case. And then now that it's filtered, I can remove that column. Notice the steps are being recorded to the right-hand side of the screen. Next, I'm going to select these three columns, which are of string data type, and I'm going to convert them to numeric. And you'll note that it's warning me that some of the data here has errors by the little red icon in the top area there. I'm going to right-click on the column and select Filter Column. Leave the defaults, but I'm going to select Is Not Error in the conditions. And again, Filter and Is Not Error. Just quickly resize the columns here. Now I'm going to right click this Fahrenheit column and select Add Column Script. And I'm going to paste in a little Python script that gets run for every row to convert that column into centigrade. And you can see here that the column's been converted, but it's got a bit of a, it's a bit of a rounding, I think. So I'm going to click on Derive Column. I'm going to give a derived by example, so I'm going to just type negative 5.5, and you'll note that it then automatically rounds all the other columns down. Convert that column to numeric data type. Next, I'm going to split the date by example into date and time parts. You notice that it's done that automatically. Next, I'm going to select the date column, and I'm going to derive by example. So I type in this field 12 a.m. to 2 a.m., and you notice that it's automatically repeated this all the way through. Right click on the date two column and select rename column to give this a much nicer name of hour range. Next, I'm going to select the date and the hour range and derive by two columns this time and give it a full date example. It's able to use these two columns to go and figure out how to repeat this pattern across the other records. In this case, I'm typing the date and the hour range from that we generated before. And now you can see that it's actually applied this new special hour range to all the records. Right-click the new column, rename column, and change the name of this column to date hour range to make it a bit more readable. Next, I'd like to summarize the data a little bit. There's a few repeating uh, time ranges there, so some of the brackets have multiple values. So I'm going to select that date hour range column. Then I'm going to select the temperature in Fahrenheit and a couple of other values. And so I'm going to group by the date hour range and then I'm going to take the mean aggregate of these columns across those groupings. And you'll see now that we've got rid of those duplicate records and we've averaged out the values across those duplicate records. Let's generate some Python code to access that. Right-click the data prep, generate data access code, and copy the Python data that's selected, and then load up Visual Studio code from the menu. Here you'll see I've got a Python file ready to go. What I'm going to do is paste in that Python code that it generated for me. And this will give me a little bit of code that can take that data package that I just created and bring it into Python into a pandas data frame for me. I right click the, the train file here and I go down to AI submit job using the AI plugins for Visual Studio Code. And this will run my job in the environment, in the local environment. And I can see here that it's actually printed out the top 10 records of that data as I've modified it using the prep stages.